What's up, everybody? This is another episode of I Finally Made It. We are back from spring break. Thank goodness. We are back. I am your host, Ashley G, and this is my co-host. Go ahead, introduce yourself. It is me, once again, Mac Diesel. We here. We are awake. <laughs> we are ready to get it going. Yeah, we need to. We need to. That's, they, you know... Thank goodness we were able to get up and come record this show today because yeah. I'm like, man, is the semester over? <laughs> That's how I really be feeling sometimes. Yeah. You know, and this being our kind of close to our last one and, you know, last time having to really deal with this yeah. and, and maybe just one more semester, you know, who knows, but having to go through this every single time where you have to will yourself to the finish line it's so tough, you know, because spring break, man, everyone loves spring break, right? This is like the only break you get in the spring semester. Thank God it's a week long. Yeah. But, you know, what How? What did you do? Um. So if I could just kind of sum up my little week that I had going on, uh, my best friend just got married on Sunday. That's and, so uh, nice. It was it was a congratulations, nice. Congratulations, friend. Absolutely. Congratulations to you, sir. <laughs> uh, I don't know when he's gonna see this, but they're in Hawaii right now. So, uh, you okay. know, okay, <laughs> had a nice little honeymoon. You know, <laughs> uh, we I went down there last week uh, on Monday. Uh, we had the rehearsal on Friday. We hung out a little bit on Saturday. You know, the boys and the girls did their thing because the bride and the groom can't see each other. Obviously, right, right, right. Um, and then Sunday, that's when everything kind of got put together. You know. Everybody was looking good. We was looking style and profiling, and Ooh. it was a great time. But overall, I think uh, the best part about it was just being able to rest and have fun more than anything. I mean, I did. I was thinking about some of the stuff that I had going on, but I was also able to rest as much as I could. So Yeah, that's one thing about spring break is so important because you need that rest. You yes. need that recharge because I know coming up to that point, it's like, man, you've been going nonstop. Yeah, And if you haven't, it's like snap back to reality. Okay, I really need to get my butt in gear. <laughs> yes. Right? It's, it's, it, it gives you that time to recalibrate. Just stop and think for a moment. Okay, what do I need to do next? Right. You know? right. But also, it gives you that time to just relax, have fun, go do whatever you want to do. I mm -hmm. went to the rodeo. I spent some time with family. Okay. You know, okay. I had a good time. Just relax. That sounds like fun. Did a little bit of editing, you know, because I have to do those things and I worked. Got to get a little work in, you know. Yeah, got to get a little work in because I need some money. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, overall, spring break was great and it was very recharging. And that's probably one of the, the best parts about having that mid-semester break is being able to just – Put everything back into perspective and be like, okay, I need to finish up. I need to finish strong. Absolutely. But today, well yeah, I know today we're, we kind of want to help you guys in how to finish strong. That's kind of what we're going to do. We're going to give you guys six tips, maybe a few more on what you need to do to make sure you get to that finish line and you do it to the best of your abilities. Because Absolutely. whether you came out the gate on fire and just knocking things out, hustling, grinding, and you're starting to feel a little bit of that, ugh, I don't want to go on anymore, mm -hmm. or whether you kind of started rough and started slow and you didn't necessarily get as motivated as you needed to be coming out the gate, this is your opportunity to jump back in. So go ahead, hit us hit us with a, a few little tips that you can give the people, Mr. Mag. Let, let us know what – what they need to do to make sure they they get across that finish line. Yes, ma'am, I can do that for you. Um, so I came up with a couple couple points that I um, thought about, and these are some things that I've used in the past as well as now, just holding on to it and, and making sure I hold myself accountable. So uh, for the first one, I put knowing what you like to do. And when I say that, I mean – what is it that makes you jump? You know what I mean? Like what makes you have fun yeah. when you're doing it? What makes you stay focused on it for so long and then eventually you need a break and then you go right back to it whenever you're done with that break, you know? Because there's a lot of things that we all like to do, but we know we can't do everything. So if you just decide and decipher 
and pick that one thing that makes it life fun for you, then, you know, just know that and, and apply pressure on it. And when I, when I say apply pressure, I mean kind of attack it a little bit, if you will. Yeah, I and like that. Attack that's it. That's my second point. So when you attack your objective, that's when you start doing your research. You start, uh, what's another thing you can do? Just p- putting down bullet points on how you're going to get it going, what type of things that you need. You know, it, it's a it's a whole lot of things you can dabble into. Planning, for sure. Exactly. But once you get past that plan, what you got to do, just do it. Just do it. Don't <laughs> even hesitate. Don't think about it. Just start. Because once you start, that's when the snowball effect starts to come. And then you're able to just make it a much bigger thing than when you first thought about it. And then for my final point is just being confident in it. Don't let the outside world or don't let outside conversation make you think otherwise. Because once that starts happening, then you second guessing yourself and you're like, well, can I do this? Well, this person is doing it too. And they have this stuff going on and they have this and they have this. It doesn't matter about that. Yeah. They may have that stuff, but, when you do it the way you're supposed to do it and you're, you're consistent and confident in your abilities to do that job, then those things come. That's but it so doesn't true. come right off the bat. You have to work towards it and you have to build. So Go back to your first point. Give us that one more time. That was strong. Knowing what you like to do. Knowing what you like to do. Now, that's important because a lot of people come to college and, for one, they're majoring in something that they don't like to do. Right. Right. <laughs> and then on top of that, you're expected to finish off your your degree or the semester and not have any motivation towards what it is that you like. Yeah. It's like, come on, you, you got to do better than that. So I, I agree with that. You know, know what it is that you like, know what it is that you're trying to get into and what you're trying to pursue. Mm-hmm. Now, if you want to be a jack of all trades and be super versatile, go for it. That definitely works. You know, companies love seeing that. Yes. Um, but if there's something that you're really passionate about and a route that you know that you want to go down, like you said, be aggressive, attack it, be aggressive about it. You know, right. right. You know, you put that plan into place. And then after you put that plan into place, you got to really go out there and make it happen because no one else is going to make it happen for you. Right. And that's the I feel like out of your three, that's the biggest thing is while you may have these goals. You have to go out and get those goals. Right. You can't just say, oh, I want this. Oh, I love doing this. Oh, I'm so passionate about this. Are you really? Because you don't put in the practice. You don't put in the time. And that's one of the biggest things, right? And just to kind of piggyback off of what you were saying, um, when when you're attacking it and you, you, you're passionate about it and like, oh, I love this. I love what I do. I mean, absolutely stay consistent. Don't Don't let it. You know, don't get too comfortable. I'll say that. Don't get too comfortable to where you just get con- content with what, whatever. Yeah. But also, I mean, you can apply pressure on yourself, but don't burn yourself out. Because, again, like I said, that's when things start to, you know, get in your head and you start thinking different things. And it's just like, well, man, I don't even know if I want to do this. And then having the, the being the versatile you know, that's that's also cool too. You know, it's it's it gives a lot of people it gives a lot of people something to think about when it's comes to hiring. Yeah. Or finding a job. But again, you don't want to burn yourself out. Just And I I can definitely speak on that. Burning yourself out by trying to do too many things. Yeah. Um I, I've definitely been there where I feel have felt overwhelmed where I've maybe done too many things. Mm. But at the end of the day, it kind of paid off. <laughs> I was going to say, sometimes you know, it pays sometimes off. Sometimes it pays off. But you don't have to necessarily put yourself through that mental strife. Right. I think to a certain extent you do to achieve a certain level of greatness because I feel like on the other side of strife in in hard work is triumph and is success. Um, however you measure your success. But I feel like if you put in the work and the time, like if you're grinding, if you're getting to the point to where you're feeling overwhelmed, there's probably going to be a payoff on the other side. I will say that. So if you're getting to that point, you may be trending in the right direction, but you might want to scale it back a bit, (laughs) you know? Yeah. Scale it back. Because if you're you're getting to that point where 
I don't want to do this anymore. Oh, I'm getting burnt out. I don't even really know if I like this. Right. Let's take a step back. Take a break. And that's why we got spring break. <laughs> <laughs> that gives you that whole week <laughs> exactly. to get the stress out. Punch your pillow if you need to. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Go, you know, work out. But definitely always take a break if you need it. Yeah, because that's going to come back and it's going to bite you just because you really start to get into your head and you'll start doubting yourself and you'll be like, well, man, it's all the work that I put in for nothing. And yeah. Getting to that place is never a good thing, <laughs> but definitely always put in the work. You know, there's always, there's a fine line, a very fine line between too much and not enough. Yes. I and, think. and, and it's right. It, those two those two ends of the spectrum seem so far away when you say it. But honestly, when it comes to media and putting in work, those things are so close. Right. Too much and not enough are so close. It is, it's, it's crazy that you say that because just to kind of have a thought on that kind of stuff, I think a lot of people nowadays, and, and this isn't everybody, but I feel like in college sometimes we – we get to the point where we don't hold ourselves accountable because when you're in college, you you're basically doing it on your own, not necessarily doing it on your own, but you have to be responsible. You don't have somebody down your neck breathing on you and telling you, Hey, you need to do this. You need to do this. You need to do this. No, you have to hold yourself accountable, yep. have a schedule, have a, a, a planner, you know what I'm saying? Um, and, Get those things done. And if you don't get all of them done, that that's not a bad thing, you know. But also try to adjust to where you can get everything done in a timely manner. So that means if you got to get up earlier than what usual usual time you get up, then you got to do that. You just have to make those adjustments. Yeah, exactly. You can't just stay comfortable. That's the one thing when you're trying to ascend to another level. Being comfortable is no longer acceptable. Mm -hmm. You have to push yourself. So, like you said, if that means you got to wake up earlier, if you got to wake up at 6 o'clock, sometimes 5 o'clock in the morning, maybe even earlier, 3 o'clock in the morning, if you're trying to get to, you know, I don't know if we shoot sports, but our women's basketball team practices at 5 a.m. Mm. So you're probably waking up at 3 in the morning right? to go out and shoot them practice. It's You have to put in time. You have to. Make sacrifices. Uh, otherwise, it's not going to happen for you. I'm going to be honest. You know, without it, <laughs> you got to. It's a mentality, honestly. It's, it's a mentality. So for my tips that I want to kind of give you guys, um, I'll start with probably the biggest one. Finish better than you started. Mm. Even if you started great, finish better than that. Right. He's like, hey. I came out the gate and I was doing awesome. Okay, do better. Pick up something. Obviously, the semester has been kind of a a breeze, or not. It may not be a breeze. Yeah. But it's been manageable, and you've been killing it. Mm -hmm. Why not pick up something else? Do something different. Do do a project. Do something that you've been really wanting to do. You can manage it. Why not jump into it? Add it to your portfolio. Don't just do what is assigned to you don't just go to class finish better than you started and if you are doing extra stuff and you are in a place where you have like an internship or something be like hey i'm feeling like i want to do more mm -hmm. give me a little more responsibility you know i'm feeling myself i feel like i've been working hard yeah and i want to do more so do it i think that's that's really important Wherever you are, it doesn't matter. Always trying to. If you can be better than what you were, then be better. Right. And if you started off kind of slow, because I, man, I've had those semesters where the first half just did not go well. That was actually last semester, uh, my senior year. First half, I don't think it was very good academically. That's fair. I was doing a lot of other stuff. Yeah. But I wasn't necessarily focused on my work. And then after midterms, it was really like, okay, I really got to put it in the gear because yeah. first semester, I really have not focused on any of this classwork. <laughs> I've been making all kind of videos and <laughs> doing all kind of stuff. Yeah. 
but I wasn't doing them papers. No. Nope. <laughs> and that's a problem. <laughs> if you don't do the work that's assigned to you in class, then, you know. Maybe you get to that point where you're like, oh, I'll do it tomorrow. Then tomorrow comes. You don't do it all day. Oh, man. And then that night comes, and that's when the assignment is due. And it's like, oh, crap. I only gave myself <laughs> two hours to write this whole paper. <laughs> <laughs> don't do that don't stress yourself out yes do not stress yourself out don't procrastinate um my next point especially if you kind of started off not so good and you really need to get to the finish line communicate with your professors i think that is extremely important that is such a strong point <laughs> like they care about you a lot more than you think and also, they're more empathetic than you might think. That's as long as you've been somewhat putting in some kind of effort throughout the semester. If you haven't been putting in any effort, you know, they may be like, you might as well just go ahead and drop the class. That Absolutely. They, they do give you that where if you've done almost nothing the whole first half of the semester, they're going to give you that talk. You might want to go ahead and drop. You might want to go ahead and withdraw. Yeah. And it's like, uh, if you got to that point, you might want to just drop. drop. (laughs) There's literally nothing. I mean, you could try. Some teachers will compromise with you. But, uh, I mean, a lot of teachers, they are here to willing and willing to help you. But like she said, if you're not actually trying to put in some type of effort, they they going to tell you what it is and they have to be yeah. honest at the end of the day. Yeah, and that's communicating works but only if you've shown some kind of will to mm-hmm. want to get to the finish line mm-hmm. from the beginning. Um and not even necessarily from the beginning, but at least sometime throughout the semester. Yes. Like just talk to if you're having a hard time at the first half of the semester, Tell your professor, I'm going through a hard time. Mentally, I'm not there. Emotionally, I'm not there. This is very tough for me. I have family problems. I have work problems. I have life, life problems, Mm -hmm. whatever it may be, you know, kid problems, all these kinds of things. Let them know, communicate, because they've probably been there. They probably know what that's like, or they've had other students that have been there. Just let them know. And they'll probably give you some leeway. They're going to give you more time to turn in those assignments. They're going to make those late penalties less of a penalty. Right. They're not going to take off like 40 points. They may take off 10 points, you know. It just really depends on how well you communicate with those professors. And you really just have to understand that those people are there for you. They're supposed to be. Most of them, some of them, we talked about this. They not. <laughs> we know oh, that. Man. We know that we they know. here to try to further along their careers. Yeah. We know that. But the ones that are and the ones that you know are there for you, make sure you're going to them and contacting them and communicate with, and tell them, hey, I'm going through a tough time. Try to help me out, man. They'll help you out. I've been, like I've been there. Mm-hmm. That plenty yeah. of times, plenty of times I've had that issue. And it's 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 all of us. Well, I'm not gonna say all of us because some <laughs> of us, some of us really just be taking it on the chin and don't try at all. But, you know, my next point, um, I might we may end up giving you guys more than six tips because I got a few on here. But <laughs> for my next point, um, plan for summer, whether that be a job or internship. Whatever, you know, classification you are, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, especially if you're a senior, especially if you're a junior, plan for your summers. I know that we want to go out and party and and drink and live it up. We go club and go to the beach, Mm -hmm. you know, hang out with our friends, relax, family, all these different things. But make sure that you're investing in your future long term Mm -hmm. during those times where you don't have to worry about school, where school isn't like your biggest time suck, where you have to go to class and turn in all these assignments. You literally have three months to do whatever it is that you want to do with your portfolio. Right. And whether that be getting a job or getting an internship, 
that's going to give you that experience or some practice towards your future career, you need to do that. Because I think it's such a a missed opportunity for students who would, throughout the summer, throughout their summers, they're not trying to do anything. Right. And they'll come back and their professor will ask them, well, so what'd you do? We're like, man, I'm gonna be honest with you, I ain't do nothing. <laughs> and that's the wrong mentality to have across the board. I think that what you said was very well put and correct because like you said, people go out or college kids go out. They just want to hang out. They want to do this. They want to go here. And they're not really thinking about, you know, what is my long-term plan? I just had a conversation with my mom not too long ago, or a couple of days ago. And she asked me, she was like, what is your plan as far as when you graduate? And I thought about it and I was like, well, I know I want to do this, but do I actually have a plan in place for that? Right. And it's it's taken me a lot to really sit down and think about it because it's it's a scary thing. It's it's like once you graduate, life hits you. And it, that's kind of almost the same thing as when you graduate high school. But I think for college, when you don't have, you know, much of a crutch, it's even more of a Man, I really just got slapped by life. I feel like after college, time really starts to tick. Oh, and I man. feel like that's a terrible thing to tell people. Yes. But that's how I look at it for myself. Yes. Is once you're out of college, the window starts to close. The opportunities, they shrink up just a little bit. Not, they're still there. Yeah. But they, the circle around them does become a little smaller. Yes. Just because when you're in college or if you're just a, a recent grad, you know, you are surrounded by people that can probably help you. And also, it's a safe place where you can make a lot of mistakes and no one is really judging you on that level. Right. Once you're out of college and you're trying to prove yourself, you really got to put in the work. There's no one there pushing you. There's no one there really to critique your work on that level that you can trust in an unbiased fashion like a professor or a mentor. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going based off of trial and error, based off of, you know, reviews and uh, analytics you get back from whatever you're posting on or Mm -hmm. if you're posting. And that's the other thing, being consistent when you're outside of college and trying to grind and put in work is is less, I'm not going to say it's less likely, but for a lot of people, they don't put in the same type of work once they graduate. Because they're just, they're just in that mentality of, oh my gosh, I'm finally done. Now I can do whatever. Also financial aid. Yeah. Um, You got to start making those payments. Yeah, early. <laughs> Six months early. after your graduation date is when you are required to start making those payments. So if you took out loans and you have not secured a job yet in the field that you're trying to go into, Mm -hmm. you know, you really going to be stuck in and be like, okay, so what did I do the last four years? Right. And I don't have a career and I got to pay on student loans that went towards these last four years (laughs) that I'm not using. You're going to really like, not like that you did that. Um, one I'll, I'll I'll probably say this is gonna be the last one. It's gonna be the last tip. <laughs> Don't ever stop believing that you can make it. I think that is probably going to be the one that I'm gonna use to to wrap here. But don't ever stop believing in the fact that you can make it to the finish line. Because I've talked to people in my classes, my classmates. And where they've gotten to a point and they're thinking, man, I don't even know if I can pass. I don't even know if I can make it. I don't even know if I can do it. You know, don't ever stop believing that you can get there, especially if you're in a place where you may be on the border. Make sure that you're putting in everything that you can to get past that point. Um push to the finish line, finish strong. That's the whole thing is if you stop believing in yourself, if you stop believing that you can do it and you can make it to that finish line, then it's really not going to happen. 
Because once you stop believing that you can do it, then that's when all the doubt comes in. That's when you stop communicating. That's when you're not going to anyone Mm -hmm. because it's like, well, it doesn't matter anyway. This is, I'm just going to wait till next semester. Don't ever, don't ever say, I'm just going to wait till next semester. Do it right now. Don't ever be like, I'm going to just wait till summer. I'm going to just wait till the winter break. No, no. And (laughs) that's the problem with a a lot of people in the world is that we put things off for so long that we eventually get to the point where we never go back. And that's not, it's not a good thing. Now, if this is something that you just don't want to do at all, then okay, cool. Tell yourself, I mean, don't necessarily tell yourself, but just let yourself know, like, hey, this is something that I, I'm not passionate about. So where can I go from here and find a new avenue or do something that is putting you in a much more comfortable position instead of stressing yourself out and saying, oh, I got to do this and I'm scared and yada, yada, yada. We're all scared. It's, it's a scary feeling to not have... Uh, comfortability I'll say that yeah it's scary I but agree. we all have to do it we all have to be adults we all have to live life in our own way so why not start now when you have this this time to to think and process everything that it is that you you're wanting to do or that you love to do yeah man like and if you were getting to a point where you're like this definitely isn't what I'm supposed to be doing and I'm just no longer motivated. Pivot. Pivot. <laughs> don't Move. don't be like, don't stop. Yeah. And be like, okay, this is it. I'm done. <laughs> no. Be like, okay, what's the next step? What's the, what's the plan? Absolutely. Where do I go from here? If it's not working for you, recalibrate. Stop. Spring break. That's why we had it. That was your moment. Mm-hmm. Now it's time. We got to go. Recharging. We got to go. Ball. We got to go. And don't, like I said, don't stop believing in yourself. Always be confident. Maintain that confidence that I can get to the finish line and I can finish strong. Even if you do have to pivot, even if you do have to recalibrate and start over, like this isn't what I wanted to do. You know, I'm two years deep into my education. I'm three years deep into my, I'm four years deep into my education. This Mm -hmm. isn't what I want to do. Pivot. Try something else. It's, It's not crazy. Because, like I said, once you're out of these four walls, it becomes a lot harder. A lot harder. So make sure while you're here, put in as much time and effort as you can because that's really what's going to get you to the finish line. But that's going to do it for us, man, right? Yeah. I finally was, made it. Finally made it. Great <laughs> that's conversation. What we, that's what we're trying to do. Yeah, We're we, we going to get there. We we all going to get there. Yeah, I'm sure. starting to feel myself. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> It's tough, man. Hey. I'm trying to I, I got so many things that I have to worry about leading up to the fact that I'm getting ready to move to a completely different state. Yeah. And and having to go through that whole process and just thinking about how am I gonna finish up here and stay yeah. focused and trying not to let too many people down, mm-hmm. but also at the same time, like I got to finish up some of these projects that I said I was going to do. Hey, one like, at I a time. One at a time. I got like, what? I got a month and a half, not even. Probably a little bit less. I think like a month and a half to okay. like close everything up. <laughs> close the book. Close everything. Sign it, give it away. But man, where can they find you at? You know, they can find me on Instagram at Captain underscore Mac 46 and then um, Twitter at Big A Train 23. That's what's up. And, you know, you can find this show at KTSU underscore two on Instagram and on YouTube. We drop at five o'clock on Tiger Streaming Network. Also, Calm Week is going on this week right now. I think when this show drops, it should be Thursday, so we have another day of Calm Week that you guys should go out and check out. We have some great events. Uh, there's a link to register. You just click on the link. It's all over our Instagram. You can go on our Instagram, and all the information is on there. Or go to TSU Calm Week Instagram. That is the name of it, and that's also the Twitter where you can find all that information. Um, but you can find me, my Old Instagram is gone. Oh, it no. got stole. 
Oh no. Stolen. <laughs> uh so if you see a guy that designs truck graphics, <laughs> that's the one. That's, that's the one. That's, that's, the, that's the one. Oh man. That's the one. That's <laughs> tough. But my new Instagram is who's Ashley G. Yes, it is who's Ashley G. W H O S Ashley G. Because who am I? <laughs> Um, but yeah, that's going to do it for us on I Finally Made It. We thank you guys so much for listening. This has been our six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 tips uh, to finish strong. Uh, thank you guys so much for listening. This has been I Finally Made It on KTSU 2, The Voice. So, yeah.